So thank you very much, um, Detlef, for the introduction, and thank you, Katriona. Um, a warm welcome from my side also. And as mentioned already, I'm the author of the first output of the D-Team 12 project, and I would like to guide you through the findings of the systematic review um, concerning the topic diverse and inclusive teams for children under 12. After a brief introduction, I would like to discuss the following questions. They have already been um, mentioned by Katrina and Detlef. And the subsequent conclusion will not only sum up content results of the research, but also highlight deficits and ambiguous results of the current state of research. Whereas several projects and studies aim at investigating the possibilities, but also the barriers to inclusive sports club development on a rather structural and operational level, this research is rather based on a pedagogical approach to inclusion. And therefore, the focus is on challenges of practice, uh, including actual pedagogical implementation of didactical considerations for inclusive sports education, including the interaction of coaches and children, the interaction among children, and also the involvement of parents in the inclusive arrangement of sports groups. The systematic review proved to be a suitable research method um, since it leads to objective, transparent and replicable results. And in the scope of this systematic review, the following databases have been systematically searched with the help of an index of keywords and to ascertain the current state of research on the topic diverse and inclusive um, teams. Only a few words to the included studies. The time frame was set to articles published within the last 15 years. And after the first screening stage, 87 articles were included in the review, plus the studies and practical implementation examples from the project partners. I don't want to go into detail for the um, index. Here you can see a keyword search terms uh, in order to answer the research questions in detail, the index was separated into six different categories, as you can see over here. Um, the presentation is going to be uploaded and available for you so you can have a closer look to the keyword search terms. I would like to rather focus on the content. So the first question, how can competitive sports for children under 12 be more educational? At the fifth International Scientific Congress within the framework of the Special Olympics, Rika Juntun describes the historical significance of sports as follows. In former times, winning was important. Then health was important. Then um, positive feelings and joy. And today we do sports all together. For a better understanding of this quote and the development of ideal competition, it makes sense to have a clear, a closer look at different types of competition. Daniels distinguishes three different types of competition. First of all, the military model that is focused on taking out the enemy, then the reward model that is concerned with a win at all cost philosophy and focuses on ego oriented rewards. And the third one is the partnership model where the focus is on cooperation, personal effort, and challenging of own skills. And concluding the ideal competition, Daniels uh, says that instead of defining and teaching competition only in terms of winners and losers, and worse yet, winning at all costs, we must start viewing and building competition by keeping elements such as cooperative skills and achievement motivation in mind which obviously perfectly fits to the first quote from Juntunen. And this egalitarian approach of the partnership model and of promoting balanced competition has been in taken into account by several inclusive sports programs as the research revealed, namely Freiburg Hamburg, which is an inclusive handball project, Unified Sports and Fußballfreunde, which is an inclusive 
football um, program. And those programs share common principles, namely that own pretensions and cooperation are focused rather than winning rewards. And that diversity is recognized and valued as a life enhancing quality. However, the empirical evaluations of these inclusive sports programs show ambiguous results concerning the significance of competition. Um, even though the coaches attitudes confirm to the principles, to the inclusive principles, and the all players highlight positive aspects like equal participation and joy, the evaluations still show a strong orientation towards social dominance. They show strong exclusive tendencies and the thinking in categories, especially when the focus is on competition. And to get a better understanding of this imp importance of winning competitions in the youth development, it makes sense to have a closer look at the developmental psychology. And there it can be said that children naturally compete and compare skills. And therefore it is important that parents and coaches understand the child's perception of competition, to make the participation in sports more meaningful for the children. And this includes the knowledge about prior experiences, about cognitive and emotional maturity and motivation. In an inclusive setting, a task-oriented and intrinsic motivation or a task-oriented climate allows the individual development of skills without any pressure from outside, from coaches, from parents, um, resulting in taking on more challenging tasks and the preference to play teams that challenge their skills. And by comparing these findings from the development of psychology and the findings from the evaluations of the inclusive sports programs and the trend towards thinking in categories and the importance of winning can be can have a common explanation and this is that most players are socialized in a non-inclusive sports setting and that especially players without handicaps experience exclusive tendencies of sports and competition that originate from an extrinsic ego-oriented and norm reference sports socialization and the question is now, as we've seen the negative effects of competition, how can this be, um, how can those negative competitive characteristics be de-emphasized and reduced? Fedyuk therefore describes inclusive sports activities as diverse, varied, eventful movement um, and, and convey new cross sports experience, open up social fields of learning, improve physical fitness and aim for more participation and co-determination. The research revealed several programs that present strategies for an enjoyable and playful sports environment. And even though most of those programs are not explicitly designed for inclusive settings, they include inclusivity as a core value. Um, and the research revealed two models that promote this inclusive and enjoyable sports experiences rather than a competitive aspects and that are the easy play model and the six plus one model of an adaptive physical education. I'm going to refer to the second one later on but I want to say a few things about the easy play model. It has three main characteristics namely the optimal competitiveness the play easy approach and a self-regulation and this is achieved by the removal of referees, removal of scores, of record keeping so that fair play and self-regulation is central and it can be concluded that it is more likely that positive effects of competition like an increase of self-perception, the sense of purpose and responsibility can be attained with an intrinsic motivation due to a task-oriented, enjoyable and cooperative environment. And I want to go on with the second question, how can diverse and inclusive teams be created? Um, due to the fact that the involvement of parents uh, will be concerned in the third research questions, right now it's about the interaction of coaches and children and the interaction among children. 
the importance of the competence of coaches related to inclusive sports programs um, have been committed in several articles and studies. One um, very important study is the one of Gisthuban Freudenberger, Inclusion in Extracurricular Children and Youth Sports. And this includes, first of all, a systematic review and expert survey. They created later on, on the basis of this, eight modules that were realized and also evaluated. And concerning the coach's competences in inclusive settings, I would like to read out one quote of Gieser and Freudenberger. For the coaches, a basic attitude open to diversity, specific methodological know-how, and the ability to adapt content to the needs of a specific constellation of children and young people with and without disabilities are indispensable. And this furthermore shows the emphasis on the need for a qualification of coaches. Uh, over here you can see the eight modules. Uh, I'm not going, I'm, I won't go more into detail. As I said, you can have a look at the report that is available on the homepage of ICSSP. I'm only going to sum up um, those eight modules aim at gaining a diversity awareness. They aim at uh, gaining knowledge about diversity and about competences in communicating, structuring and adapting in inclusive settings. Next to the importance of the coaches' competences, the results revealed that the peers played the most significant roles in the children's life to feel included in sports and games. And therefore, um, I would like to, again, only sum up uh, the eight setting features to support a positive youth development and establish a strong bond between developing persons by Cote. Um, and this includes a respectful and inclusive peer interaction, a deliberate play in childhood, positive communication, positive social norms, the support of a child's autonomy, the support of skill building. And all those features are also considered, again, in the models of for inclusive sports, the easy play model and the six plus one model. And they are also considered in inclusive sports programs that the research revealed. Freiburg of Hamburg, the Cheetahs, wheelchair basketball, and several other reverse integration sports projects. For more information to those um, inclusive sports programs, again, I would like to refer to the um, report. As I promised, a few words to the six plus one model of an adaptive physical education. In the center, you can see the coach or the teacher. Um, as I said before, one very important part for the coach competence in an inclusive setting is the attitude open to diversity. And um, also the adapting, not only to content, but in the six plus one model to material environment, rules, communication, social form and tasks. And a continuous reflecting on the children's abilities and adapting all those six aspects. The third research question, how can parents engage in and support inclusion? The research revealed a lack of empirical studies concerning parental involvement in inclusive sports programs, whereas there are various results of empirical studies that deal with parental involvement in physical activities of children with disabilities. And the research furthermore revealed many studies that have advice for parents ensuring the rights of their children for an equal sports participation and several studies that aim at giving parents a clear understanding of their roles and responsibilities in children and youth sport. All of those studies and programs usually um, refer to a non-inclusive setting. There's only one study that the research revealed that focuses on the role that parents play in the transition from separate physical activity programs to inclusive settings for their children. And I would like to sum up the central aspects on a way to a successful inclusive sports program and the perfect involvement of parents. 
first of all, the, it is very important that there is a positive and supporting behavior of parents and a good parent coach relationship. And the parents support concerning transition challenges, diversity awareness and principles of youth development shall be focused. I would like to come to the conclusion. The research revealed several empirical studies on the positive effects of physical activity for children with disabilities. But as I already mentioned, there's fewer empirical studies on the positive effects of inclusive sports activities for athletes with and without disabilities. And still the focus of the recent inclusion debate concerning extracurricular sports is still on the theoretical effectiveness and potential of inclusive sports settings, as well as on structural and operational aspects and barriers on the way to inclusion in sports. And at the same time, there's a lack of studies on how and with what effect inclusive sport programs can be implemented. So there's a lack of empirical studies for didactical considerations and pedagogical implementation. Mm. Furthermore, the research revealed a general deficit, which is even more striking with regard to extracurricular sports for children and adolescents. Um, compared to, for example, inclusive physical education in schools. And it has to be added furthermore that more articles and studies are based on a narrow understanding of inclusion. That means that the diversity dimension of disability is in the center and in a broader understanding of inclusion, um, there's no thinking in categories. So there's no thinking in disabled and able and other diversity dimensions play a big role, like socioeconomic background, language, agenda, and so on and so forth. Uh, the discussion of results show that, that there is a significance of de-emphasizing competition and physical activity to support a positive youth development by means of a task-oriented environment that promotes intrinsic motivation. Uh, where the focus is on cooperation, personal effort, and challenging on skills. It furthermore shows several models for inclusive sports that highlight the importance of playing cooperative games without the necessity of competing and scoring, and provide self-regulatory and reflective processes, create involvement and co-determination of all participants in inclusive sports settings. It furthermore shows the common trend of the importance of the coach's competences and the important role that parents play alongside the coaches in influencing and reinforcing physical activity for their children. So much from my side. Thank you very much for listening and I'm yeah, free for questions. Please feel free to ask. <laughs>